Let's take a look at animal welfare reforms and the impacts they have on animals and on vegan advocacy. Now, it's easy for discussions like these to get stuck in sound bites and posturing about who cares more about animals. It feels good to say things like, not bigger cages, but no cages, or no compromising and no working with animal abusers. But animal liberation is not about us. It's not about us getting to express exactly how we feel. And it's not about our own personal purity. Every one of us became animal advocates for one simple reason. We've seen this, and we've seen this, and we've seen this, and we want it to stop. We know that it needs to stop, whatever it takes to get there. And if we want to get there, we need to look at actual facts. We need to look at data. We can't just cling to the idea that if we always ask for exactly what we want and nothing less, that that will bring about the best possible world for animals. That approach sounds too good, too easy to be true, because it is. It's magical thinking, and it's not the way the world works. It never has been for any other social justice movement, and it never will be for this one. So we need to look to the data to see what it can tell us about how individuals and how societies change over time. Here for your consideration, are six data points, six facts, about the impacts of welfare reforms. You can decide for yourself what you think about these facts and what they mean for the movement overall. Data point number one. Welfare reforms reduce suffering and they provide immediate good for animals. I'm not going to try to make the case that hens on a colony, in a colony cage or on a cage-free farm are living a happy life. Conditions are not good for the animals, and they shouldn't be there at all. But the fact remains that hens on cage-free farms or in enriched cages suffer a lot less than hens in battery cages. Simply being able to turn around, walk around, and spread their limbs is a real and important improvement for each individual hen, just as it would be for each one of us if we were in their situation. The same holds true for getting pigs out of gestation crates and getting veal calves out of veal crates. This is not simply a matter of opinion. Dozens of peer-reviewed scientific studies published in countless veterinary journals and textbooks make clear that animals in cage and crate-free systems suffer less, both physically and mentally, than those in cages. Data point number two. The animal ag industry spends millions to oppose welfare reforms because reforms are bad for the industry. Look, these people aren't stupid. They would not spend tens of millions of dollars fighting legislation that would ultimately benefit them. The industry worries, and rightfully so, that welfare reforms would drive costs up even slightly, and that would lower demand. And they also worry that reforms now would open the door for more reforms down the line. For example, let's take a look at the current federal hen bill that would ban barren battery cages throughout the United States. Who opposes this bill? Well, the Animal Agriculture Alliance, the Egg Farmers of America, the National Pork Producers, the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association, the National Milk Producers, the National Turkey Federation, and the American Farm Bureau. The National Cattlemen's and Beef Association said that defeating this bill is their number one priority in 2012. And the American Farm Bureau stated, stated quote, while we think this proposal is an unconscionable federal overreach, our gravest concern is that this precedent could leach into all corners of animal farming. Gene Gregory, the president of the United Egg Producers, said, quote, If all egg production were to become cage-free production, demand for eggs will be reduced because some consumers can't afford to pay more for their eggs. So who exactly is the animal agriculture industry worried about? Well, this chart, courtesy of CountingAnimals.com, takes a look at Feedstuffs magazine which is basically the premier trade journal of the animal agriculture industry. And it looks at what animal protection organizations Feedstuffs is talking about, complaining about, and worrying about over the past 10 years. As you can see, there's one organization far and above the rest that the industry is most concerned with, and that is the Humane Society of the United States. For the simple reason that it's HSUS that has spearheaded nearly all of the state, 
and federal legislation protecting farm animals over the past 10 years. They're not talking about or worrying about any absolutist animal rights organization for the simple fact that such absolutist organizations pose no threat to what the industry is doing to animals. Data point number three. Welfare reforms are followed by a reduction in consumption of the affected animal product. This is a chart of what happened to per capita egg consumption in the European countries that independently ban battery cages, separate from the EU-wide ban on battery cages. Countries that ban battery cages experienced an average decline of about 7% in per capita egg consumption relative to the overall European Union average. And that's just after the passage of the ban. Now that the EU-wide ban on battery cage egg production has actually come into effect, there's been a significant increase in the cost of eggs in Europe, and consumption is expected to drop significantly. The same is true for the price of pork, now that the EU's ban on gestation crates is coming into effect. The price of eggs has risen so much in the months following the start of the battery cage ban that in England, people are having trouble buying their beloved egg sandwiches. One article stated, quote, Chains have seen the price they pay for eggs more than double in a year, and many are having to cut back and switch to alternatives. Data point number four. Media coverage of animal welfare issues causes people to eat fewer animal products. An exhaustive study by agricultural economists at Kansas State University found that when the media covers farm animal welfare issues, including state bans on battery cages, veal crates and gestation crates, the public eats less meat. The study said, quote, as a whole, many attention to animal welfare has significant negative effects on U.S. meat demand. Media coverage of animal welfare issues and animal welfare laws does not people to go out and buy more meat because they think the animals are now being treated well. Rather, it causes people to eat less meat, period. Data point number five. Welfare reforms go hand in hand with decreases in meat consumption. This is a chart of the number of state anti-confinement bans passed in the U.S. over the past 10 years. As you can see, there's a sharp rise starting in 2005. This is a chart of how much animal agriculture industry publications, poultry science and meat science, have been talking about animal welfare issues over the past two decades. As we can see, there's been a sharp rise, especially since around 2005. So during this time period, as there was a jump in the number of animal welfare laws, an increased focus on animal welfare in the industry, what happened to meat consumption? Did it go up, as people thought that animals were now being treated better? Quite the opposite. Meat consumption has dropped dramatically over the past 10 years, especially since 2005. In fact, since 2005, there's been a 10% decrease in the amount of meat being consumed per capita in the United States. That's nearly 1 billion animals that are not being raised and killed in farms each year as a result of this decrease in meat consumption. Now, there's several reasons for this decrease, but the trend fits right in with trends in other countries. Countries that have the strictest protections for farm animals also tend to have the highest percentages of vegetarians. For example, if we look to Europe, countries like Germany, the Netherlands, England, and Switzerland which all have relatively stronger protections for farm animals, have much higher percentages of vegetarians than countries like Denmark, Portugal, Poland, and France, and others that have relatively weaker laws protecting farm animals. Now, this is not true for every single country, but as a general trend, it clearly holds. It's also worth noting that here in the U.S., the organizations sponsoring, or at least endorsing, welfare reforms are the very same organizations carrying out the overwhelming majority of efforts to encourage vegan eating. Organizations like the Humane Society, Farm Sanctuary, Mercy for Animals, Vegan Outreach, PETA, Compassion Over Killing, and the Humane League. Data point six. People who make a small change become more likely to make a large change. This is absolutely established psychological phenomenon. It's called foot in the door, and it's been the subject of literally over 1,000 peer-reviewed academic studies. The studies have found that overall, people who make a small change become about 10% more likely to make a similar but larger change down the line when encouraged to do so. So what does that mean for us? What it means is that people who go meatless on Mondays 
or who vote to support a ban on gestation crates should become more likely to make a larger change that benefits farm animals, like going vegan, when encouraged to do so. Why would this be the case? Well, the reason is that once someone does something, even small, like contacting their legislator in the support of an animal welfare law, they start to see themselves as someone who cares about farm animals. At this point, the consistency principle kicks in, and they become more open to similar, further changes, like going vegan, because they've already identified themselves as somebody who cares about farm animals and takes action to protect them from harm. So in conclusion, remember, this is what we must stop, no matter what it takes. Regardless of how we feel and what we find personally distasteful, if we want to create the best possible world for her and other farm animals, one year, 10 years, 100 years from now, we can't just say exactly what we want and hope things turn out for the best. We need to look to the data about how individuals and societies actually change over time. And all of the available data right now tells us that welfare reforms reduce animal suffering now and in the future. They cause people to eat fewer animal products. And they make it easier to create new vegans.